Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to How Do You Know If You Are Learning From The Right Teacher? with subtitles from Sim. So, this, I thought this was an interesting one. It's like, you know, how do you, how do you know? If I was asked this question, how would I answer it? I'd probably say, <clears throat> if your life is changing for the better because of the practices that your guru um, or your teacher is teaching you. Uh, meditation, um, you know, a particular set of yoga, <clears throat> um, and whatever method they happen to use is making you see clearly, feel better, and suffer less. I think then you are um, learning from the right teacher. Is it the 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 right teacher? <laughs> it is a right teacher, I will say. I don't know if it'll be your final one, though, but that would be my answer, so let's gonna get started. This better not be a tension getter, you know? <laughs> this better be a real question, that's it. How do you know you, you, uh, you are learning from the right Dharma teacher? <laughs> I mean, fair Take enough. the microphone away and make him sit down. <laughs> You make sure his surname ends with a rimpo chi? A. B. You make sure he's tall and good looking? B. C. You make sure he's on a big throne? Next, you make sure that everybody's kowtowing to him? And the last thing is you don't ask him stupid questions. No, I'm just kidding. That's a good question. How do you know you're following a right Dharma teacher? You don't know. There is no right or wrong Dharma teacher out there. Very good question. Let me make it very clear. There is no right and wrong Dharma teacher out there. No right and no wrong. Some Dharma teachers are very illustrious and sit on big thrones and have big names, but in some previous lives, they're very simple and they stay in meditational hermitage without a lot of students or without a lot of fanfare. It doesn't take away from their rightness. Some Dharma teachers has a huge entourage and huge students and huge temple and huge centers. Some has a little forest refuge like a cave. It doesn't take away from their holiness. Some wear black hats. Some wear yellow hats. Some wear yellow hats. Some wear red hats. Some wear no hats. The hat doesn't signify their holiness. Some teaches you the meditation on Tara. Some teaches you on Tsongkhaba. Some teaches you on Shakyamuni. There's no difference. A Buddha is a Buddha. There is no right or wrong Dharma teacher, but there is a Dharma teacher that suits your predisposition and your um, inclination and your style. When we meet a doctor, um, you know, whenever we said there's no right and wrong Dharma teacher, it's like, okay, right and wrong. There's, so there's a Dharma teacher that is right and wrong. But then here he says right or wrong, which I, I figured he meant to, probably meant to say in the very beginning because, you know, I would say there is wrong teachers out there. Um, obviously, the ones who are trying to take advantage of you are clearly wrong. Um, but the question still lies with what the child uh, the child has said, which is a very one that I think most people want to know. How do you know if you're running from the right teacher, the correct one? Assuming the correct one is the one that's trying to make you better and not take advantage of you, or trying to make you go down a wrong path. I'm a teacher that speaks to us to our heart and consistently encourages us towards bettering ourselves, then that's the right Dharma teacher for us. <laughs> no one can judge another person's Dharma teacher, and no one should ever criticize another Dharma teacher. No one. Because for every Dharma teacher you criticize, you hurt hundreds of people. What? For every lineage you criticize, you hurt thousands and millions of people. For every Dharma master you criticize and you put down, you bring yourself to a level of ignorance. Why? You create the karma circumstances for you not to receive dharma. So how do you know if the dharma teacher is right for you? That is for yourself to check and no one else can ever tell you. Because the experience you have is unique. The way the dharma teacher moves you is your experience and is unique and no one can take that away and no one can give you that experience. So if someone comes along and tells you your Dharma teacher is bad or good, you close your ear or you ask them, please respect my intelligence. Please respect my intelligence.
But you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. If you're interested in gossip, you waste your time in gossip. So how do you know the Dharma teacher is right for you? Check this. Make sure the Dharma teacher is speaking about Dharma to you all the time. And that whatever the Dharma teacher is doing to you, whether it's in anger or in jokes or directly or in gifts or in speech or in vice, it's always leading you towards the Dharma. It's always leading you toward betterment of yourself. Leading to Dharma means what? Betterment of yourself. Check that. Check if your teacher is always patiently waiting on the side for you to transform, to give you knowledge, to encourage, to shelter, to take time away for you. You check that. Why would anybody on this planet do that for you? Number one. Number two, look at what the teacher asks in return from you. Look at how little or nothing the teacher asks in return for you. Number three, when the teacher teaches, this is very personal for Sean and for everyone. Does it speak to your heart? Does the teacher touch your heart? Does the teacher move your heart? Does the teacher affect your heart? <coughs> if the teacher affects your heart and moves you and motivates you, you have found the right teacher. Again, I will say this too with that though. Like, I, I, I do agree, but again, people, there are people out there who are very, very smooth talkers. And you have to follow, I think it's number two and number three very carefully. They may say, oh, you don't have to pay me anything. Just whatever you whatever you can afford or whatever, you, donations and stuff. That's fine. You know, if you think it's worth it, then, you know, donate as you wish. But when they start requiring more money or when they start trying to sell you stuff like ointments or something and call it like holy water or whatever or holy book or holy shoes or holy whatever uh, you know you might and start trying to sell you books and stuff I mean I get skepti skeptical depending on the cost of the book and you know if you buy it once and it looks good then maybe you can trust the other books but it's just kinda <clears throat> I guess I just go kind of on an alert whenever people try selling you stuff. It's not to say that what they're selling is bad, nor am I saying is it good. It's just kind of like, hmm, are you just trying to get money? Now, it could be legitimately a really good book, but you won't know until you buy it. <laughs> or, you know, hear what other people say about it, of course, especially those who have read the book. And no matter how high his throne is or no throne, no one can ever take that away. If you're looking for a name, star power, or fame, or have a lot of disciples, big temple, big titles, you're not looking for a teacher. You're looking for another way to cover your insecurity. People will only chase after high teachers and high names and high positions and big titles of teachers, and therefore they go for their teachings. It's another way to hide their insecurity. Why? Because they follow someone so great, they must be great, and they want to send the message that they're great. They don't have the courage to say, I'm following this teacher, I'm following this lineage, I'm following this practice, I'm following this. They don't have the courage to say that they're following the truth or what they feel, but they actually want to cover their insecurity. That's how religious politics arise, is when people hide their insecurities and they chase after rank, name, position. That should not be. In the 50 verses of Guru Devotion, it says clearly, whatever our position our Lama is, whatever position our Guru is, whether it's a reincarnated Lama or a normal Geshe or a normal monk that teaches us Dharma, that brings us to enlightenment, in our meditations, we should see him as perfect Buddha. It says in the 50 verses. So how do we know that the Guru is correct for us? The question here, let me reiterate, very good question. The question here is not whether the Guru is right or not. The question here is the Guru right for me? And if the Guru is right for me and is not right for another person, we don't stuff it down their throat. If the Guru is not right for me and is right for another person, we also don't discourage the other person. Said Guru and Acharya Prashant. I, I, I still kind of see that kind of cro uh, crop up in my uh, videos. Like, <clears throat> I have a personal opinion about that, but let me just put it this way. You know, I don't, I don't, I will never ever discourage anyone from following Sadhguru Acharya Prashant or Swami Sarvarpiananda or Swami Tadatmananda or anyone. 
I, as a matter of fact, I'd advise them to watch them all. <laughs> because, again, what, what Guru or Swami works for you is going to depend on you. You have to give everyone a chance to see what kind of speaks to you more than others. And as a matter of fact, there's nothing... I, I, I personally don't believe there's anything wrong with following most of them, to listen to each of them. Each of them are not teaching the exact same thing every single day. They teach different things. And, and they can give different opinion on the same subject matter sometimes. And sometimes one advice works and the other doesn't. It's very personal. Does the Guru always send messages and makes effort for us to transform? Does the Guru always teach things for us to change? Does the Master always find one way or another to rescue us, to help us, to assist us? One. Number two, what is the Guru's relationship with us? What is the Guru trying to do with us all the time? And three, when the Guru speaks to us, speaks to us, does it touch our heart? Does it motivate us? Does it change our mind? And least but not last, does the Guru actually make us think deeper? And if he does that consistently again and again, he's the right guru for us. Being that he's the right guru for us, it doesn't mean he's the best guru for everybody. If he's not the right guru for us, it doesn't mean he's the worst guru. But the most important key is to not create religious politics by criticizing, by bombasting, or out of ignorant fear, complimenting. You see, because if someone says something negative about a guru, sometimes we need to defend and explain. Sometimes we keep quiet. We check our motivation. Is it our own fear? Or is it real? Is it real? Many people are not loyal to the guru. Many people. When things go wrong, they run away. When things are bad, when the guru asks them to help, they say no. Many people are not loyal to the guru. Many people, when the times become difficult for the teacher, they're not available anymore. Or they say no. Or they think about their own problems. But one thing you need to realize is through the years, have you seen your guru be loyal to you? That should tell you about the qualities that the guru has developed in his own mind. So that also helps you to feel what kind of person he is. The guru can be tricked, can be cheated, can be taken money from. But that's not the point you should worry about. The point is, how does he react? How does he not give up? How does he work? How does he push? You need to check that. That's what I looked in my own gurus. I've seen my gurus hit rock bottom where they have to take buses and teach for a living and collect um, salaries I've seen. But they never change or become disheartened. They become temporarily sad, but they never give up. I've seen it. I've experienced it. So we know the guru is right for us if the message hits our heart. The message goes inside our mind. And this message can change our mind and change our heart. Then we know it's our right guru. And what's our guru? Someone who can help us to overcome our emotional problems that we make for others and ourselves. Not your master. Not a slave driver. Someone that can help you. That if you cooperate with, you will see tremendous transformation in your own mind. If you cooperate with. Everything in life, the knowledge has come about from others. Everything in life, all of our ignorance that we have and the lack of ignorance that we have, the lack of it, the ignorance we have in the beginning and the lack of it as we grow up comes from teachers and other people we've observed. We've observed and we've learned from. Nothing came from within ourselves. And that's very important. So therefore, how do we know if the teacher is right? I gave it to you on a general synopsis. General. Why do we, why do we need a teacher? Someone who needs an accountant. Someone who needs a masseur. Someone who needs a gym trainer because you don't have those skills. <clears throat> so going to a masseur who can take care of your back problems and your muscle problems doesn't mean you're bad or you're ignorant. It means that you don't have those skills. This person has the skills to help you to massage or relieve your pain. Going to a doctor doesn't mean you're stupid. You didn't study to become a doctor. doesn't mean you're stupid. So what's the difference if you go to a masseur? What's the difference if you go to a doctor? What's the difference if you go to an accountant? What's the difference if you go to a teacher? They all serve as different method, ways and methods to help you overcome something in you. So it's very simple. If we need Dharma teachings, we need Dharma knowledge, we go to someone who has more knowledge than us. We call this person a guru. You can call this person sifu, guru, teacher, master, you know, uh, reverend, preacher, doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter at all. It opens you up. So when we need a field of knowledge, we go to a person who has the field of knowledge and we ask for it. And we receive. No different. No different. Hold on, I'm going to look at that real quick again. Hey, was that woman laughing? Or smiling really right there? Feature doesn't matter. Huh. Doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, there's one thing I do want to say. Uh, the reason why I kind of brought it up is around this point. By bombasting or out of ignorant fear complimenting. You see, because if someone says something negative about a guru, sometimes we need to defend and explain. Sometimes we keep quiet. <clears throat> okay, so I remember now. Um, so, about the Acharya Prashant and Sad Guru part. Again, um... I'll say this, if anyone ever talks bad about someone else, you know, uh, I'd say this. So say someone talks bad about, uh, someone who follows A talks bad about someone who follows B. Me, I personally say, it, it, to someone who has never interacted with both of them, it's like, hey, look, you know, man, I, I, I said I remember. That's like, you know, just give both of them a chance. Don't believe in what people say. Know the truth for yourself. That's a freaking good one right there. <laughs> Don't believe in what people say. Hear them out. Absolutely. You know, hear a lot of people out. Those in favor, those uh, uh, against. And then judge for yourself by actually going to it. Giving them a fair shot. That's the best thing I could say. That goes with, like, you know, people who watch me. <laughs> Give me a fair shot, you know. <laughs> Uh, and and if you don't like it, then you know what? I'm not going to be mad at you. Like, look, you know, you have a life to live. You choose what videos you want to watch. You choose to live a like down below if you want. You can leave a comment if you want. <laughs> you can subscribe if you want. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. It's that you have control over your life. Take responsibility for your actions. Who you follow, who you listen, what advice you take. All up to you. People can say whatever they want, do whatever they want. You ultimately make the decision of what happens in your life. You ultimately make the decisions of what advice you follow. You ultimately make the decisions of what actions you take. So, take responsibility. Judge for yourself. Take people's advice. Hear them out. I don't say follow it. And then follow what you think is best for you. <coughs> but know for yourself. Anyways, that's my reaction. So how do you know if you learn from the right teacher? If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.